Chapter 32 Vain Imaginations and Counter-Narratives Stupidity is a more dangerous enemy of the good than malice. Dietrich Bonhoeffer By now, it is evident that everything is intertwined in a larger narrative, and we, as individuals, are stories nested within the grand tale. However, in most cultures, God's story faces stiff competition from numerous other narratives, especially from its primary adversary, the evil one, also known as Satan or the devil. The Bible reveals that he has opposed the divine plan since the beginning and manipulates humans to achieve his ends. Deception is considered his primary tactic, employed more frequently than any other. Yet, it seems he also harnesses the power of stupidity, a tactic for which humans have no natural defense. The devil is not stupid, but he welds the magic wand of stupidity with great acumen, casting his spell upon Western society to the point of mass psychosis. These days, stupidity is not only too common, but also insisted upon. We are commanded to affirm and celebrate it. Being stupid is a badge of honor and a resume's enhancer. People march in the streets and make what they think are painful confessions of their stupidity, thinking they are brave. You cannot buy or sell without stupidity written on your wrist and forehead. Your life is cancelled. It is dangerous to contemplate the stupidity of others, lest one be accused of it himself. So, let us allow the pastor Dietrich Bonhoeffer the honour of explication. He was a German theologian and pastor during World War II who opposed the Nazi regime. It ultimately cost him his life. While imprisoned, Bonhoeffer came to a profound realization about his country. Its descent into criminality and thuggery was not due to a lack of intelligence or knowledge, but rather a moral problem, the affliction of stupidity. Stupidity, as Bonhoeffer observed, arises when one's actions are not guided by wisdom, but are driven by emotions, half-truths, or a stubborn refusal to face the truth. Such individuals become ensnared and blinded by their own biases, prejudices, and unyielding adherence to slogans. Attempts to reason with the stupid prove futile, as they remain impervious to persuasion and perceive any opposition to their ideas as personal attacks. Of course, the results of stupid people are general ruin and an endless parade of societal debris. The only way to deal with stupid people is to make oneself free from them until such a time they may come to their senses. With lies and malice, we can fight with force or logic. Christians carry the belt of truth and the shield of faith, but the stupid carry the belt of lies and the sword of invincible ignorance. Yet what makes them particularly vexing is their tendency to project their shortcomings onto the wise, accusing them of the very faults they possess. The Apostle Paul foreshadowed contemporary society when he wrote, Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie. Romans 1, 1125a As I sit here writing, I can't help but ponder the possibility of future readers stumbling upon this book tucked away in some hidden shelter after the world has faced its apocalyptic challenges. Will anyone even read it? Nevertheless, allow me to wax sarcastic with the events of my day, where an interesting situation unfolded involving a surgeon general who identified as a woman while addressing concerns about the distressing experiences children face during puberty. Why? He worries that children might have the wrong puberty since biology, and God often get it wrong. It was quite a remarkable time indeed. Surprisingly, instances arose where men exposed themselves publicly to children, not in dark alleys, but rather during parades. In the old days, they taught us some strange things. Can you imagine? They actually claimed that even the milk in our cereal bowls and climate change itself were somehow connected to racism. And don't even get me started on how they criticized the IRS mass violence, displaying the American flag, supporting the Constitution, 
or simply asking for identification to vote. They considered all of these practices as evil and racist. But wait, there's more. Singing, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas, enjoying peanut butter and jelly, using harmless phrases like long time no see, and even having particular sports mascots, all heinous reflections of racism, apparently. Oh, and let's not forget city bicycle rentals, breakfast cereal, mathematics, Dr. Seuss, tipping, SpongeBob, solar eclipses, air, dogs, babies, farmer's markets, obesity, monuments from the Civil War, classical music, and Thanksgiving. Yes, all labelled as racist, too. You may think that's the end of the list, but oh no, there's still more to come. Well, unless you're still stuck in that bomb shelter, in which case, I suppose your primary concern is finding some old canned goods. At first glance, it may seem like harmless craziness, but the truth is, the culture of stupidity is perilous. As Dietrich Bonhoeffer rightly pointed out, we could stand up to it and combat it if it were merely malice. However, foolishness is an entirely different beast and incredibly challenging to overcome. I am convinced the devil's forces recognize this fact too well. When foolishness is combined with lies, it results in stories that tarnish the beauty of God's grand narrative, rendering it unrecognizable with its blue-haired ugliness. Unfortunately, this ugliness is pervasive, seeping into various aspects of our lives. Even the realm of art has not been spared. It has become a quagmire of abstract and grotesque creations, often filled with explicit sexual content or blasphemous themes. The ubiquity of this spectacle is alarming and a testament to the power of foolishness intertwined with deceit. Moreover, this stupid culture driven by their fundamentalist bloodlust for conformity will defame, debank, deplatform, litigate, and even criminally prosecute anyone challenging their counter-stories. It is demonic at its root, as Paul wrote, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. In other words, the critic of God's story attempts to tempt them into a counter-narrative that supports their vain imagination. The Christian is God's message-bearer, the storyteller for the grand author, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10.5 in the last days, God's story foretold that people would forsake their faith, succumbing to the alluring teachings propagated by demons. They would reject God's narrative, seeking teachers who would validate their desires instead, like itching ears, yearning for confirmation. 1. Timothy 4. 1. 2. Timothy 4. 2. 4. Bonhoeffer astutely observed that they would become entranced by their slogans and catchphrases, but its dangerous gaslighting sets this current wave of stupidity apart. These ear itchers are not only deceived and irrational, but they insist on wielding power to suppress what they perceive as injustice or insensitivity. Any criticism they encounter is met with childish retorts like, I know you are, but what am I? they become more tribal and more antagonistic to outsiders. Bonhoeffer's foresight is evident, as he saw a similar arrogance rise during Hitler's regime. Ironically, the contemporary mob exhibits a similar spirit, branding all dissenters as Nazis. Satan has learned from the German experiment and is now prepared for a second round of tests before the final trials. The stakes are high, and the battle against stupidity and deception intensifies as it seeks to undermine God's divine narrative. However, Christians are fond of reminding themselves, we read the end of the story, and God wins. <laughs>